Hi, I'm the Space Quest historian, and these are the Space Quest primers. Imagine having to take a test, and if you passed it, you became spaceship captain, but if you failed, you get shoved into this tiny airtight toilet stall and flushed into space? Well, believe it or not, that's one of the first things we'll be doing in Space Quest V, the next mutation. Now, between Space Quest 4 and 5, the world around Roger has changed quite a bit. Everything's gone a bit Star Trek in that there's this big federation of planets full of aliens, and they have an academy for spaceship captains, and Roger now wants to become a starship captain, even though he already had a ship and was ostensibly captain of that. But anyway, the game starts at Starcon Academy, where Roger is predictably doing very poorly. He cheats on the final aptitude test, and thanks to a rodent induced malfunction, he comes out top of his class. I'm not sure why he needed to cheat on the exam if the rat was going to chew up his results anyway, but here we are. We got our own starship, and because our commanding officer, that's this guy, hates our guts, our starship is actually a garbage ship, so we're right back to being a janitor again. Yay! This hateful snot, by the way, is Captain Quirk. Yes, this game is very heavy on the Star Trek puns. He doesn't like us, and we don't like him. This is Beatrice, the woman our future son told us was going to be our future wife. She's alive and well in Space Quest V, and has only the faintest idea of who Roger is, and isn't very terribly impressed. So, we're off to clean up the galaxy. The first planet we stop off on, we pick up this life form in the trash compartment. And it's this lovely little guy. He poops acid, but that's okay. I'm sure he'll make a great pet once he's housebroken and stops trying to lay eggs in your trachea. Second planet, we're suddenly attacked by another killer android. The galaxy sure is full of killer androids. This one was also sent by the same novelty company that the first one in Space Quest 3 was sent from. And for the same dumb reasons that, as I explained back in the Space Quest 3 primer, is actually a huge plot hole that does make any sense. These guys are essentially mad that Roger didn't pay for a whistle that was free all along. So you beam down to this lovely planet, jam a banana in the robot's jetpack, and beam her back aboard your ship because your chief engineer thinks he can turn her into your science officer. Sure, why not? You also break into her ship and steal her cloaking device. I'm sure this is all perfectly legal. Next planet we head to, we intercept this sinister clandestine transmission between a disgusting roach-like creature and whoever this guy Quirk is talking to. Haha, <laughs> see what I did there? Remember, we hate Quirk, probably because he wears a toupee or something, I don't know. Anyway, since that's all for one day's hard work, Roger and his crew zip off to the local space bar to have a drink and unwind. Roger's chief engineer almost immediately gets into a fight, so Captain Quirk has him thrown in the brig. Well, we can't go anywhere without our chief engineer, so we feel perfectly justified in causing a huge destructive distraction by flooding the bar with these tiny little space monkeys, and then busting him out by melting the prison bars away with acid. Also, the bar explodes because too much space monkey. Essentially, we just blew up everyone's favorite drinking establishment because our commanding officer is a dick. I'm sure this is all perfectly legal too. We're then told that we have one last trash pickup to take care of, so off we scoot to this lovely rock. There's no trash signal, so Raj and his navigation officer Drool beam down to figure out what's wrong. Here's what's wrong. Ah! Drool shoots this mutant man, which somehow reverses his mutation, don't ask questions, and he points you towards the can of mutagenic sludge that turned everyone on the colony into these half-melted blob monsters. The can says genetics research lab, so maybe we should go see how they're doing. But before we can do that, we get a distress signal from the Goliath, who says they're under attack. And meanwhile, back on Quark's ship, Quark is looking, well, his usual lovely self, really. I'm a bit pimply, but I'm sure he'll be fine. So, of course, being the helpful sort of people that we are, we zip on over to the last known coordinates of the Goliath, even though the game just showed us it's too late to help anyone. But anyway, lovely planet, nice and mushroomy. Here's an escape pod, looks like someone made it out alive at least. And what a lovely frock, can never have too many of those. Oh look, there's Beatrice. Of course we get ambushed, and of course we're safe just in the nick of time, but speaking of Nyx, one of the mutants blasted Bia just before we got transported away, so into the cryotube you go, honey, until we find a way to get you better, or everyone dies. Also, don't fuck up this bit of the game, or the game will Marty McFly your ass out of existence. Right, well, good thing we stuck around in orbit long enough for the Goliath to track us down and start shooting at us. We can hide in this asteroid field, but our dumbass engineer can't keep his feet on the hull while doing repairs, so of course we have to go and haul his ass back onto the ship. Right, 
now we're all good. Now we can head off to that research lab and start asking them just what the dealio really is. I'm sure they'll be more than happy to answer a few qu- Oh, they've abandoned the whole station. Great. There's a bit here where the transporter turns you into a fly and then you turn back again. It's all just here so you can find the secret lab, read the logs that tell you that these guys were bribing Captain Quirk to dump their toxic garbage on colonized planets. And that surprise, surprise, when shit backfired on them, they took off and ran. Spoiler, none of these guys are ever brought to justice for any of this. Quirk is the main antagonist now because he's dirty and mutated and a bit of a prick, but the dudes who actually caused the catastrophe never mentioned again. Anyway, back on the ship, Spike somehow solves the mystery on how to cure the mutation using the transporter. Who knew the little fella had a PhD in microbiology? So we test it out on our comatose future wife because <laughs> it's not like she's important or anything, and stunningly, the little acid pisser was right. Through the magic of Technobabble, we've somehow separated out all the mutation gunk from Beatrice and flushed it into space, where I'm sure it can do no harm whatsoever. Okay, so now we know how to cure the pimple epidemic, let's zip on over to find the Goliath and try it out on them. Ignoring, of course, that it's the fucking flagship of the Star Confederation and built like a brick shit house. But if the infected colonists could board it in their little ragtag shit pile of a rocket, I'm sure we can too. And indeed we can! We make our way through the most god-awfully monotonous crawl space maze in adventure game history that frankly all but kills the momentum of the story stone dead, until we reach the switch that turns off their shields and get captured. Not for long though, because our pet killer robot beams over and shoots liquid nitrogen out of her tits, disabling everyone and giving us time to rig up this transporter so we can cure the crew of about 12 people? S seriously, is this all of the Goliath's crew? Oh well, it's a riveting success and all is well, except for Quirk, who nabs a shuttle and flies straight off into all the mutagenic snot we just beamed out into space. What a dumbass. So we beam back onto our own ship, vacuum the snot blob up into the garbage hold, evacuate the ship, and set it to self-destruct. Then we steal his ship and speed off just in time to watch him blow up into a million chunky gooey pieces. That'll teach him to be such a dick. And so the game ends, with Roger now in command of the Starcon flagship, his girl by his side, and off they fuck into the sunset or whatever. Space Quest V is also regarded as one of the high points of the series, but for very different reasons than the previous two games. It is a bit of a tonal shift, due to the fact that it was only developed by one half of the original two-guy development team behind the first four games. Mark Crow, now working at Dynamics in Oregon, was asked to do Space Quest V as a sort of litmus test to see if Dynamics could do adventure games in Sierra's SCI engine, which... Evidently, they could. But little did Mark know that back in Oakhurst, California, a fella by the name of Josh Mandel had been pitching ideas for a Space Quest sequel even before development of Space Quest V started. And while he didn't get to do Space Quest V, by the time Sierra once again clamored for a new sequel, Josh was put in charge of making Space Quest VI, a game that turned into such an awful experience making, he quit halfway and left it to the other half of the original duo, Scott Murphy. And that's the tale for next week as we dive into Space Quest VI, The Spinal Frontier. Until next time, I'll see you around the Chrono Stream. Bye!